When I was in street prostitution, it was dangerous. When I was on Backpage, it was dangerous. And when I was in underground strip clubs, it was dangerous. So I don't think there's one any more harmful than the other. I was kidnapped at the age of 12 and I was brought into the sex trade, um, locked in an abandoned house behind a closet and forced to do everything from street prostitution to underground strip clubbing and then eventually the internet, which is kind of why I'm here today. I had an exploiter, I had a trafficker who would do the ads for me, would write the ads and or stay right next to me and have me write the ads and would tell me all the things to say and what to write and things of that nature. For years, up, maybe up until this point, I struggled with feeling like I was less than, you know, dehumanized. Um, I always lived in this constant victim state and state of paranoia and state of feeling like I didn't amount to, you know, a lot of the people that were around me. The only difference between FOSTA SESTA is that FOSTA is federal and SESTA is state and they both serve the same purpose. So back in 1996, there was the Communications Decency Act. In the CDA of 1996, there was this small clause that basically said that websites or, in, or internet sites are not responsible for third-party content. And now that FOSTA SESTA has passed, what it does is change that small clause in the CDA of 1996 to basically state that from that point on, from its passing, internet sites are now being held accountable for knowingly facilitating prostitution. This basically takes away their ability to screen clients. I just know it's a big fuck you to the sex worker community. to me sex buyers are dangerous, but specifically on Backpage and, and sites alike, they were the most violent dates, the most violent johns. It can target somebody that is under 13 and it can target somebody that's over 50. So even just beyond a financial issue, it's, it's a, a sexist issue for sure. It's gender-based violence. them say, you know, because the sites are now shut down, they are now forced into more dangerous situations in the street. And what I want to say to that is that prostitution was dangerous on, on any level. And it's always been dangerous and it will continue to be dangerous as long as it is um, violating somebody's human rights. It's definitely a, a, a victory on a personal level. I'm so happy that the website that exploited me for all of these years are is, is now eradicated. Um, but that does not mean that other websites will not turn up. That does not mean that children and, and adults are not still being trafficked. Pimps are very innovative, as are other traffickers and sex buyers, and they will find other ways to continue to exploit a person's body. So I honestly do believe that um, it's definitely something we're smiling about, but it's not the end. One of the things that I advocate for is partial decrim or partial decriminalization of prostitution. Decriminalizing the person that's engaging in prostitution, um, or in their words, the sex worker, right? And um, criminalizing those who perpetrate it. So the sex buyers and the pimps or the traffickers. One day, instead of criminalizing those in prostitution, offer them resources and services, um, things like healthcare, housing. So definitely like trying to get them more jobs and get them financially stable so that this so prostitution doesn't have to be an option for anybody.